Cycling 4,700 miles across America, that's the easy part. Try doing it with almost no negative impact and while paying attention to how every single one of your little daily actions affects the world around you both near and far. That's what I did two summers ago and I learned all about the pressing environmental issues of our time and how I can be a part of the solution. Now I'm sharing with you what I learned in a series of five videos. This one's about food. I was determined to eat only food that didn't cause environmental and social destruction. This meant eating only local, organic, and unpackaged foods, and it meant giving up almost everything at a typical grocery store. Local meant I would eat only food grown and harvested from within the state I was in or within 250 miles. Organic meant that the food had to be grown naturally without using any pesticides, herbicides, or other chemicals. Unpackaged meant there couldn't be any packaging on the food, even if it was recyclable. From what I had learned about food in America, I knew this wasn't going to be easy, but I had one exception to these guidelines. I could eat food that was going to waste, especially from dumpsters. If it's still good, why waste it? My journey started in California, where I had no trouble finding the food I needed. California produces more food than any other state in America. And we're setting the uh, farm record for most number of raw eggs eaten. In my seven days cycling across the state, I didn't purchase a single item that went against the guidelines. It was pretty easy. The only waste we've created here is two stickers and this receipt. So with all this shopping, no waste. Just food that we're gonna eat. Getting a little bit of a late start, but we're hoping for a 100 mile day. When I made it into Nevada, I had to cross 500 miles of barren desert. There were long distances with no civilization, let alone a farmer's market. I managed to get by mostly on food I had left from California. After a month of cycling, I had gone into dozens of supermarkets and found that most of them carry no food from within the state. What you're seeing here is lunch. A couple of different potatoes and uh, mushrooms. They've also got onions. These onions are uh, locally grown right here in Utah. The only locally produced item that I could find in Utah so far. These grocery stores I've been to all in all these small towns don't have any food, hardly at all, that's grown in within the state that they're at. And that's what I'm doing is I'm only eating food from the state that I'm in. I learned that the average meal travels over 1,500 miles from farm to fork in our industrial agriculture system. And simply by reading labels, I discovered many items like fruits, veggies, and cheese travel up to 7,000 miles from places like Chile, Spain, and New Zealand. By not growing food locally, we've become almost completely dependent on fossil fuels and huge corporations. Instead of nutrition and flavor, they grow food that is durable for shipping, has a longer shelf life, and above all else, is profitable. When I reached Boulder, Colorado, I let out a big sigh of relief. They have one of the largest farmer's markets in America, and I was able to eat local, organic food to my heart's content. You've been liking this market or what? Yeah, it's a great market. So, some of the stuff I got, I got these wheat berries. This is grown 30 miles from here. There's one ingredient, and that's apples. Uh, a whole bunch of arugula as well. Happy trails. May the wind be at your back. <laughs> After Colorado, I descended into the Great Plains, where I was surrounded by monocrops of corn and soy that expanded as far as the eyes could see. Food was everywhere, but I couldn't eat any of it. Very little of the food was organic, which was a reflection of how less than 5% of all food in America is grown organically. 37 days on the road, and I just bought my first not local, not organic food. Didn't have a whole lot of a choice. Not only is this detrimental to the earth, but it's taking a huge toll on farming too. Our soil is being depleted, making land less productive. Chemicals are running into the groundwater and pesticides can now be found in tap water. Native plant and animal diversity is being destroyed. And corrupt corporations like Monsanto are wreaking havoc socially and environmentally and seeking to control our seeds and our food. 
I also passed factory farms where much of our nation's beef, chicken, and pork is produced. These places are mostly closed off to hide the conditions inside from the consumer. Chickens are crammed 30 to a cage, so tight that they can barely move. Male chicks at egg farms are thrown away by the millions. Pigs are confined to cages they can't even turn around in. And cows are treated in a way that no consumer would want to know about. The food created from these animals is of poor nutritional quality, playing a huge part in Western diseases like diabetes and heart disease. Once I hit the Midwest, it was growing season, and I was able to find a lot of locally produced and organic food. Farmers markets, local farms, and health food stores started to pop up around me. I even found local and organic food in the big supermarkets, but most of it was in packaging. Almost everything at grocery stores is in a package, and this can be seen in our polluted oceans, littered roadways, and overflowing landfills. When you eat a bag of potato chips, you get, say, five minutes of enjoyment. And then that bag is still here for 500 years. All that packaging takes energy and resources to create and to dispose of as well. Not so long into the trip, I simply stopped going into regular grocery stores. Instead, I started to go around back to the store's dumpsters and I was blown away. We found this grocery store and boy is this dumpster a treasure chest. In most towns I went to, dumpster after dumpster was full of perfectly good food. I learned that we throw away nearly half of all the food we produce in America, about $165 billion worth annually. Meanwhile, one in seven Americans are food insecure. That's a monstrosity in itself, but when we waste food, we waste so much more than just food. We also waste the water, fossil fuels, energy, and resources it took to grow it, harvest it, transport it, and sell it. When I arrived in New York City, I had eaten over 280 pounds of food from dumpsters, about 70% of my diet. But when I wasn't resorting to the dumpster, I was almost always able to stand by the local, organic, unpackaged standards. I had purchased only 22 packaged, 8 non-organic, and 12 non-local foods. One trip to the grocery store for the average American would involve more packaging, pesticides, and long-distance ship food than I purchased the entire summer. For as many bad things as I learned, I also saw a ton of good happening. Here are some simple ways that you can be a part of it. Buy local food. Go to the farmer's markets, participate in CSAs, and know your local farmers. Buy organic food. Buy unpackaged food. Simply bring reusable containers to the store and buy from the fruit, vegetable, and bulk food sections. Stick to whole foods over processed foods. If it's in the same shape as it was when it came from the earth, you're probably good to go. Eat a plant-based diet. This means more fruits, veggies, grains, legumes, and nuts, and less animal products such as meat, dairy, and eggs. Grow your own. It's incredibly satisfying to eat homegrown food. Start growing in your backyard or help out at a community garden, or make seed bombs and do your gardening freestyle. And lastly, don't waste any food. 